Andrew Armstrong, welcome to the back office. Today you'll notice a different aspect behind me and that's because the camera's been turned through 90 degrees to look at the electronics area. I've had a little tidy up of this area this evening and that's because I've got an electronics project I'd like to do. So I thought while I was at it, I'd turn the camera on this area and show you a few tools, basic tools that you might need to do some of your own electronics work. To start with, you'll need a good multimeter. And when I say a good multimeter, I don't mean an expensive one. These multimeters can be had for as little as five pounds on eBay. They'll measure all the AC, DC, current, anything you need, and they'll last you a very long time. So don't worry about the price. Nice cheap one, rotary dial on it. You'll get to learn every function you'll ever need on one of these. If you've got a little bit more money though, and you want to be a bit more flash, get yourself an auto ranging multimeter. So if that was five pounds, this might be 15. This one's a nice model. It has the probes tidy away nicely in the back. Again, all the same functionality. The only difference is it's all electronic. There's no analog rotary switch. You just switch it into volts mode, pop it on your circuit and it'll do the rest. Again, I would probably suggest you learn your, the tricks of the trade of the basic model before going to one of these because if one of these goes wrong you don't really know what, and you don't understand how they work perhaps you might not interpret the numbers on the screen correctly. So if you're doing a lot of car work though I would suggest one of these and this is again the same sort of auto ranging multimeter however instead of having two probes and a central unit the central unit is built into one of the probes or rather a probe is built into the unit so this uh, doesn't require you to have three hands when you're working in a car. Again, same sort of rotary switch as before and it's a couple of buttons to define the ranges. So the second most important thing you'll need after your multimeters is a soldering iron. And here I've got a soldering station. Now, a lot of you will be used to the kind that you plug into the mains. Um, there's a wire and it just ends in the solder iron. That's the kind you'll have had at school. However, if you're buying one, I suggest you save up a few more coin and then get yourself a bench mounted model. That's because a bench mounted model has a digital screen on it and a temperature sensor in the tip. <clears throat> so when you've set it to 200 degrees, this, this will reach that temperature, 200 degrees, 300 degrees, whatever it happens to be and stay there. That's very important for when you're using your soldering iron on surface mount or sensitive components. You need to set it at the exact sort of temperature you need to work with them. You don't want to get be too hot. So if a regular soldering iron might cost you between five and 15 pounds, perhaps you could get one of these on eBay for as little as 30, 35 pounds. So save up the extra pocket money and grab one of these. In addition to the soldering iron, get yourself some basic ancillary tools for soldering, such as solder wire, uh, unleaded is actually the uh, most common now, but if you can still find leaded, get some of that that's very easy to work with. A solder sucker, solder wick, and what really essential is solder flux. There's two kinds of solder flux you can get. You can get yourself the liquid flux, it's very cheap, very common. You can probably buy a big bottle of that in Maplins for a tenner. Or, what I prefer is a gel flux. If you're doing any kind of surface mount or IC work, get yourself a gel flux. There's a lot more control, it holds the heat on the uh, component better um, and you'll find far better flow with this. Get yourself both, it's cheap enough. And perhaps one of the best tools you can buy if you're um, considering doing surface mount work is a good tweezers because a good tweezers will allow you to work with those integrated circuits and small components. The only downside is a good tweezers is going to set you back 30, 40, maybe 50 pounds for one like this. I know it sounds like a lot of money but this will last you a lifetime. It really will. If you use some of these generic cheap tweezers you get that come with the kits um, you can pick these up for sort of 50p a pound. You will not be able to do anything useful with these. Trust me. Really save up your money and get yourself one of these. I know it costs the same as a soldering iron, but you can't go wrong. <clears throat> so just to cover some of the things here, I'm just going to dart through them very quickly. You've got a bench power supply on the end. 
This is incredibly useful and incredibly important if you're doing surface mount um, or PCB work because you need a good controllable power supply. It has a built-in ammeter as well so you know exactly what your circuit's drawing. If there's an error in your circuit you'll be able to see it right away and, and really make sure that you take the power off before something blows up. Digital storage scope, this is a four channel model. Again, a little bit more advanced, but a really useful thing to learn. If uh, perhaps a relative has one of these that they don't use, perhaps you can borrow it and maybe learn a few things, learn how to operate it, really useful. Sometimes in a car boot sale, you might find a very old analog um, oscilloscope. Again, pick one up. If you can find it for five pounds, 10 pounds and get it working, it's really useful to learn on and very useful in debugging circuitry. This is basically a automated version of a solder sucker. It's got a heated tip. When you pull the trigger, it applies a vacuum and you can use that for sucking solder out of through hole components. We don't really use that so much these days because everything's surface mount, but it's still useful to have on the shelf. We've gone through the solder and right on the end, we have a hot air blower. If you're doing any sort of surface mount work, you can actually get away with just this tool. This is the only tool you need to place and remove components. You'll find them on eBay as labeled as rework stations. If you're lucky, you might find one of these with a soldering iron built in. Again, all controllable digital set. I should think you could get a combined unit from 50 pounds on eBay. Pick up one of those and perhaps that's the only um, soldering iron and solder suck you need, um, hot air station you need. As you start doing more bits and pieces with um, surface mount, uh, equipment you might need some uh, something to hold your PCB <clears throat> so you can get yourself one of these quite cheap working platforms it's basically a clamp you put your PCB in it clamps it nice it's a nice big unit it'll stop it uh, drifting on your work surface if when you're using your soldering iron and things on it again very cheaply obtainable on eBay Okay, so I hope uh, this whistle-stop tour of uh, electronic tools has been useful to you. If you've got any questions, please leave them in the comments below. If there's any piece of equipment you'd like me to go through in any detail, again, leave them in the comments and I'll make a video especially for you in the future. Please click subscribe as well if you want to uh, be on the list so that when I publish more and more videos about these things, you'll be alerted to them on YouTube. Thank you very much for watching. Thank <laughs> you.